Right? I know. It's the strangest motorcycle I've ever seen, too. A little backstory on it. I went to uh, a show during the summer, a swap meet that's called Ricerama, a Japanese motorcycle bike show and swap meet. And well, this was there, and I thought it was really interesting, and uh, it had to come home with me. It looks like it's been sitting, I don't know, 30, 40 years. I wouldn't say it was outdoors due to the fact that the seat isn't all rotted away, but definitely is uh, showing uh, signs of old age. Uh, anyway, let's uh, go get it out over on the bench and uh, see what we got and see if we can kind of resuscitate it and, and bring it back to life. Let's give it a walk around. So it definitely looks like they tried making an air cleaner out of a t-shirt and a piece of rope. I don't know if it's missing something there. I think the engine, I want to say it's a Tecumseh. I hope that seat flips up. I'll check into that later. That's trash pretty good, that cover that's on there. So there's a track that's underneath there. I think it's like a motorcycle chain with uh, paddles attached to it. It's like it's gone down a few times. I have a feeling this thing goes down a lot, just <laughs> the nature of it, right? Actually, it looks like one of those uh, AH-47 engines. They have a, um, you can switch the manifold into different locations on the crankcase. Not sure of that yet. So it's got the drive in the back, then another ski, and then a third ski. I haven't opened the gas cap yet. Doesn't fall off. Actually, doesn't look terrible in there. Doesn't smell great. Doesn't look terrible. It's part of the frame. It's got a, a serial number on it. The headlight is kind of kicking to the left there. I guess that's going to be a brake for the track, and the other side is just going to have a motorcycle throttle on it. Bolts busted on the headlight. Seems a little on the sloppy side, doesn't it? it looks like they kind of made it to take apart too. It's like you pull a pin, you could take the front ski out. Probably so you could put it like in the trunk of your car. And my guess is the last thing this thing was done is uh they ripped the pull start out of it and that was it so i don't even know if it turns over and i think we're gonna about to go find out so let's um is there a way we can turn it right now yeah maybe we'll pop a cover off we'll start getting into it maybe we'll take this off we gotta fix the pull start anyway and we'll just see if that spins yeah i wouldn't think it has many hours on it Yeah, first of all, how much time of the year can you ride it? And I think after you fall down about seven or eight times, you're kind of done for the day. It's like skiing <laughs> when you learn how to ski. Sometimes when a regular screwdriver is faster. Right. Let's see over under. I'm going to say it turns. Oh yeah. Not all the way. <laughs> that feels a little crunchy. There she goes. Uh, let's um... Get a plug out of it. We'll shoot some oil down the side. Yeah, it's not happening. We'll shoot some oil down the side and we'll see if we can get a uh, drill set up on here. We'll spin the motor over, see if we get spark. Okay. Plug's loose. There we go. That's where I saw it turning. 
Call me a liar. Told you it was loose. Right. Let's get some oil down inside there. Heck, it's, it's pretty oily already, which is good. So that back in. Throw some oil in there and we'll get a drill set up for it. Yeah, let's go give her a little... Yeah, that. That's just to kind of... Any rust that's on the base of the cylinder. Give it a fight chance. There's a little... I would think there's got to be a clutch on it too, so we might, we might be hearing that noise, which sounds a little on the... Clacky side, you know? Alright, let's, let's get a drill. The problem is, depending on which way that thread is, it may want to spin the nut off, but let's see. What we're going to try spinning it with is, this is a, uh, a, a ratchet extension. So, one way it could freewheel, and you click it over the other way it can drive. So, if the engine does start up, it allows it to ratchet free without it trying to kick the drill out. So let's see what we get. So we need to drive it. We had it right. Yeah, so one of that. And can you see the plug? Let's go see if that does anything for us. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> you want to try dribbling a little bit of fuel in it real quick and see what it does? A little bit of that. I think the headlight switch is on. I don't. I would think this. I don't know if it's a taillight brake light. We'll see if anything kind of, if it runs, comes to light. Get it? <laughs> All right. Very well. Hopefully the nut doesn't back off. <laughs> it kicked out a bunch of uh, material out of somewhere. I don't know if it's out of the, the cover or what. All that powder is coming out. Nice. Nice. That's so cool. It's got a little spark plug socket wrench right there. You think that you take, looks like you take that out of there. Maybe the seat will flip up. I also want to take a peek at that track too, what we got going underneath. Yeah, you think we take that out? Out of seat. I don't know. How's that gonna? The seat's all bolted down. Would that allow this whole assembly? It allows the whole assembly to come apart. That's what it is. So there, and there, you pull the pin off. Looks like you take the fuel line off. Made it double duty. Yeah, let me get that out of there. Yeah, this thing's got a screwdriver tip on the end of it right there. Let's go lay it on its side. We'll take a peek what that track looks like. I'm kind of curious. Because that's the thing that's been in contact with the ground the whole time. Alright. Got a better look. <laughs> Uh, it looks like a motorcycle chain that we talked about and it had some kind of like plastic rubber cleat is what propelled it and yeah, they're all done huh it's like the upper one still might be there because they're being more contact in the ground yeah they're all they're all junk too though I wonder how it's attached to the chain I don't know if that's rivets what is that can we replace them with metal does it have to be plastic I don't know, maybe we at some point get it off of there and uh, let's get this cover off of there I wonder if um yeah we can weld on it looks like there's a metal cleat underneath there I wonder if we could order them too I don't know if they make anything for this but I would say we can probably make something out of metal I want the rest of it I'm surprised it's not like a um a ribbon in the center it's like opposite Nothing there, and then there is a rib there. Actually, three of them. Hmm. Looks like a drive. 
Let's get some covers off and get a better idea what we got going on. Once I'm now, I'm going to pop a couple of these screws out and then we'll get whatever this is right here. We'll try to figure out what the drive system is. My guess is some kind of like a mini bike clutch is up there. Actually, I see a cable to it. Do you, got a, do you have a cable to engage a clutch? Go take that nut off that's holding it, but it's kind of rusty. Let's see if we can uh, wire a wheel and clean it up a little bit first. It looks like, I think that's where the brake is. So it looks like a regular, I can say regular, but a regular centrifugal clutch. As the engine spins, these come out, touch the drum, and make it go faster. And then this is a band brake going around it. You can pull the cable and it stalls out this outer hub, which in turn stops the chain from turning, which in turn stops the track from turning. Oh, looks like just bicycle chain. I don't think it looks like anything fancy that's on it. Maybe even a little smaller, huh? All right, let's go get this cover off. Looks like four screws should do it. Faster than the screw gun. It's going to clear with the exhaust system on it. Actually, <laughs> so busted up that it we can wiggle it right out of it. Right there. Yeah. Had little scoops on it. Sounds what they're supposed to look like, huh? Yeah, they're just done. Gotta figure they're 50 years old, right? And then we got a tensioner in the back, a little idler sprocket. Hmm. I wonder if we can recreate that. I think it's kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but still. I see a master link there. Is there a bunch of them? Are like they individual? Hmm. I'm kind of wondering how they're attached. It looks like the underneath is metal. I don't know how they're you know, hooked into the chain. Hmm. Are they like on the outside of the link? Like what's the, I still don't know what the bond is to them. It's gonna break since I try to put a little twist on it. Well, we know what they look like. Let's uh, continue to go on. We should probably take, let's go take this sprocket off, get some play on it. We'll see what does and doesn't turn. I don't know what we got going on behind here. Okay, we're just trying to assess conditions of what we got. Yeah, let's go pop that snap ring off of there and get the sprocket out. on there or not. We've got about another half inch to go. Can we see a master link on this one? Might be hidden up in the clutch, you know. Yeah. Look at that big ass pry bar. Let's see if we get ready to go now. I'm almost there. there you go. <laughs> Definitely sat in one place for a long time, huh? Right, let's go see if the shaft moves. I don't think so. Uh, what do you want to pick at next? I'm going to go. 
I wonder if we should just get this one right off of here. We saw where that master link was on that one, right? Yeah, right there. Let's go get that popped off. See so if we get this chain assembly out of there and we'll get an assessment of how this bearing is up inside here. Yeah, it's just not gonna fall right off of there, huh? Half it already broke off. Half the clip's already gone. There we go. I'm gonna try supporting it with something. We'll try getting a punch and we'll we'll tap on those two so we could drive that down. See if it'll move for us. <laughs> They're just shattering everywhere. Got a little bit more room. Make me cut you in half. I will if I have to. It's going. I'm gonna keep working on that. That side's going. One side's not. would help get some of the tension off of it. There we go. All right, let's go break that free. <laughs> yeah, it's been on there a little while. That was not gonna spin. to go through there. It's almost like a Bakelite material. <laughs> if he sat in one place for a long time. Yeah, what a weird little scoop to him, huh? Let's go see what we got for bearings that do or do not spin. It's like a spur for a cowboy boot, doesn't it? That one's locked up. And what do we got about this one? Oh, this one's good. A little growly, but at least that one spins. So what's that one? I wonder if it's probably just rust between here and the wall. Maybe not the bearing. We can go and soak that when the time comes. All right, let's go see what we got going on on the clutch setup. So if we take that clip off of there, we can get the outer part of it off. We'll probably be able to get that chain out of there. Yeah, so just a, a little clip, a little C-clip. We lift that whole thing right out of there. There we go. Come on. Now we should be able to get that chain out from behind it. That stud's going to be close to it. So close, but so far. Uh, I see a snap ring. Let's uh, see if we can get that off. We'll pull the whole clutch up. It's all got to come apart anyway, right? So. Might as well just keep going. Launch it across the room. 
the chances are that'll slide right off of there. Yeah, I didn't think so. We're gonna try the pry bar setup. We should probably take, go take the wire wheel. Actually, it looks like it's got a key on it. So it's probably gonna be a little bit of a press fit. Let's go clean the edge of this off. So we're not trying to go over the end, um, edge of rust. Grab that little pry bar. Give that a little me off chance it just wants us to just slide off of there. Kinda went a little bit. Let's um shoot some oil in there. Yeah, it feels like it's hitting rust on that outer edge still. Hmm. It should be that much. Especially, you already hit it with a wire wheel. Let's somebody hit it with a hammer on the on the face of it, you know. I'm gonna try cleaning that up a little bit more. Like something else to hold on. I'm gonna go take a peek under the back side there and we'll see if there's any kind of like set screw or anything that's kind of I don't know, it's a lot of a lot of movement. I'm gonna go take a peek underneath see what I can find. How about we try going at it with two pry bars? I don't see any set screws or anything under it, so. When you would grab the other side for me. Yeah. I do you think I'm missing something? I'm missing a lot of things, but. I just can't imagine that it's so free to move in there, it won't get over that last little shoulder. And why would you have a snap ring on it then if. There are no set screws on the back side. Hmm. I might take a little sanding disc and try going around this outside edge right here and see if we can get rid of any kind of shoulder or lip that's on it. Maybe just where the snapping was, it, it kind of rolled the lip going around. But you would think you put pry bars on it, you'd be able to get it. See the breaking are coming off. Yeah, it felt crunchy underneath though, like a push through something. I kind of wonder maybe we're supposed to take this just the center out of it and not the ring. Too late to tell now. Probably should have tried that, huh? Just pulling up on the center of it, not the whole thing. Yeah, but how still, how would you get, oh, so that would have to line up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need a are coming out of it. I destroyed that bearing. That sucks. But still how, oh. So that's, yeah, screwed up. 
So we should have grabbed the center of it. Why did you say something? <laughs> so we pull the center out of it, then take the pin out of it, and then we could have uh, taken the rest of the disc off. Learning curve sucks sometimes. Should have known that too. Yeah. Oh. Well, there's a part that we don't have. <laughs> So what are we doing now? We are probably going to look into, yeah, I'm pissed about doing that. Let's get this mess of what is going on over here out of the way. I don't know how much of an air cleaner you really kind of need. Because if it's, you're riding in water and snow, like a snowblower. Snowblower doesn't run an air cleaner at all because it's generally always run in a clean climate. And if you did have one, it would try to screw up the, um, it would freeze on you. You know, it would collect water and then freeze and choke itself out. Let's get that carb apart. We'll figure out what's going on there. Hopefully not break anything. <laughs> anything more. That's all that decent. It's got some kind of weird, I don't know what that box is on the other side. What's going on with that whole contraption? What's all this stuff? It seems like a lot for a throttle cable, doesn't it? See, that's your, that's your idle speed. Yeah, it's gonna start popping some screws off of this cover, get it out of the way, and then we'll get the carb off of there. Another screw on the linkage on it. I think there is. Yeah, we're not getting that screwdriver though. I think that was rubber at one time. Now it's getting pretty petrified. Petrified. Choke moves. Let's get rid of the fuel line. I think that's a plastic fitting on the bottom, so. See if you can not break that. I might go cut that with a razor blade. There we go. Yeah, it was plastic. All right, we got two screws holding that on. Let me get that off the body. There's a couple of, it's like 12 mil, 11. I'll get that body, the carburetor off. I'm gonna get the, the base off of there and see what the guts look like. What am I calling something 11 millimeter for it? This thing is made in USA in the 70s. 7 sixteenths right there. Right. And inside of the, in, the intakes. Ooh, that's chalky, huh? It's not somewhere damp. And I recognize that Tilton. Tiltson. The air fuel mix for very high and a low. Let's go crack that. Yeah, Tilson. Crack that open, see what the diaphragm looks like. Yeah, let's go fast forward this cover. Actually, get the center of it out first. This should have a, a filter in it. A screen. I like the fact that it's got a bunch of oil in it. Plus this thing probably hasn't run before uh, 
ethanol came to be, you know. Make sure there's nothing else in there that has to be unthreaded. <laughs> hmm. I think you just stuck. Some get these out of it. Should be a couple of springs right there. I don't know if I'm gonna go grab them with a screwdriver. Grab them with that. Nope. It might be just washers with an O-ring on it. Uh, I'm gonna try getting a, a razor blade. And we'll tap on the edge of this and see if we can get this to pop apart. Try to set it on something. There we go. It's got two different floors to it. There we go. That's one. That's gonna have a diaphragm in there. Just in the off chance it's good. I don't try not to trash, trash anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. There we go. Seems a little flexible still. Yeah, it actually feels pretty good. Alright. One more floor. Have we have that before like that? Yeah. Now let's see if we can that's a port right there. I don't I don't want to try to if we have to use that over, I don't want to damage it right there. Let's see if we can get something going here. When you would hold that. I could just put it in a vise, huh? Could they get any pry that boot off? <laughs> a couple of screws in there holding that. That's a little better. Let's see if we can uh, get that to come apart. That one's stuck. Watch it doesn't. Watch it doesn't even come apart, right? <laughs> I'm trying to just jam a razor blade into aluminum. You're waiting for me to cut myself, aren't you? So nice. Yeah. 
going to leave everything on either one side or the other. Let's get that open. Actually, the back frame feels pretty good too. I don't know. We really kind of, we got to kind of get to the needle and seat though. Uh, I'm going to take my time and take the razor blade, probably even a sharper one. And I think I'm going to work around this lip right here and see if we can do it without tearing to see if we can get this off of here because there's a needle and seat under there. I'm more than likely it's going to have to be cleaned judging by the corrosion on the rest of it, you know. So that is the needle and seat. That really should come out of there and get cleaned. What do you think the chances are? I got this carburetor. <laughs> or a carp kit for it. That diaphragm does look familiar. Might, just might have it. We want that. Yeah. All right, so we know we need a carb kit if possible. I'm gonna go take some pictures of numbers for us. There's one. I'm gonna go do some shopping and see what's available. And then we got a, a kind of a, a decent assessment of what stuff that we need. Hopefully we can find some stuff that we need. The biggest one I probably think is gonna be that chain. I'm trying to find that chain that um, with the paddles that are on it. Well, it's a few days later and I was able to acquire a carb kit for it. So I think we can go and get this stuff cleaned up. We'll start reassembling this and hopefully get the carb back on and maybe fix the pull start. I ordered the other parts too. I got the uh, chain with the teeth underneath it, track, <laughs> I guess we're gonna call it, the bearing for the clutch and the rear sprocket. That should be coming in in a few days, but let's see if we can get the engine finished up and running consistently. And then, you know, when those parts come in, we can move forward with that. I got the gasket scraped off of them. Let's go throw the main parts in the pool. Let them go swimming for a while. Shake, shake, shake. Well, that's soaking. Let's go look into this pull start and see what we got going. It's got kind of a funky style to it. We're seeing like this. I guess that's the cams that come out and grab the cup. I don't know if it just broke the rope off or it's locked up or oh, it's pretty, pretty bound. And the fiber in that diet. Let's um. See if we could pick that rope out of it. Let me go move some of the stuff out of the way. We don't go trashing our carp parts. All right, let's see if we can find out where the end of that rope is in there. And that's not rope, cobwebs. It's, uh, that drum beat you hear going on in the background is rain coming off, or well, water coming off the roof. We had a big snowstorm and it warmed up. I don't think there's any rope left. I think it's all What's left here? I wonder if the rope broke because this bound up. Or the other way around. Yeah, so it's dripping off the roof, making all that noise. There should be a big coil spring on the other side of this. I don't know if I want to rip into that. If we don't have to. I don't know if we just kind of shoot some lube in there. Let's try that first. Because I know sometimes it can be like a... Uh, Venus flytrap. The thing just springs out of there. I can be a little bit of a bitch to get them to. Who knows if, even if that spring is any good. She's moving. Here he goes. 
I think the center was the uh, the G spot. All right, turn it back. That's a good sign. Sometimes uh, you load it up and you hear the spring on the inside go. Brrr. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> that's what I was afraid of. Is that going the right direction? Let's see. No. You want to go like this, and then it would suck the rope back in. I may have dislodged the little latchy piece. Uh oh. I think we're going in anyway. No, it winds up that way. That's kind of hard to tell actually, because it's almost straight out. That's gotta be the right way. Yeah, I think the end of the spring is busted off. Yeah, you hear it slipping. All right, we're going in. We'll get ourselves a Philips, and hopefully that's all it's holding in the center. And hopefully we can, um, Maybe heat it up and bend the little tab back. All right. <laughs> it's like it's like a grenade. You just lift right out of there. Tension spring. What else we got? Anything else? There's another washer there. You ready? <laughs> you think it's the best way this way or the other way? Uh oh. It didn't go, it didn't go boing yet. There it is captured. It looks like. So that's the tab I was talking about. Oh, the spring's all busted up. It's broken there. Yeah, it's like it's busted up in a couple of places. Can we do anything with that? Can we steal a spring out of something else, maybe? How do you see it? Yeah, from there to there is broke. It looks like it's got like a a bunch of, I don't know, bends in it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I get for ordering parts without looking at everything, right? Yeah, it's it's so brittle. It's done. I don't there's that's not gonna be enough to work with though. Yeah. So maybe yeah, it's it's in the <laughs> You glue them back together? How are you at welding? So, we know that's no good. Maybe we can take like a regular Tecumseh or Briggs pull starter. I don't even know if I have one. And then steal the cup. The cup is the piece that's in the center of the engine. Here, I'll show you. So that's what a cup is right there, that piece. I wonder, I wonder if we could take one off of something else and maybe try to switch it over to that style. If not, maybe we'll try to get a spring to fit on that. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of a weird pull start anyway. The way it, there's there's no direct something that it locks into. It just looks like it, it grabs on the metal on the outside. Normally the tab on a pull start digs into a, a bump that's sticking out of here or a tab and it locks in and once it spins, the tab goes back to neutral and the engine just starts. Let's go shopping, see what we can find. Up in the plethora of junk, Gotta find something that just has a pull start in general. It's a Honda one. What about something like this? It's riveted on. Let's go. We'll take this one. Possibly we could use that. I'll keep peeking a little bit. Oh, there's another. What we got going on? Right there. I see that cord. Cord's hanging out of that. I wonder if that would even work in the center of... Somebody's getting on it. We'll grab that one. 
don't know if there's a cup in there anywhere. The land of broken toys. All right, I'll dig for a little bit, see what we can come up with. There's another one down there. Process of grabbing those, look over at the land of dead chainsaws. That almost looks similar to that inside sprocket, didn't it? Let's go grab that. The other one's got four bolt holes on the outside. It's got three. Looks like a sprag style. You might be able to use like a chainsaw one. We just keep finding pull starts. All right, let's go bring a pile down. Something in there is going to work. It just doesn't know it yet. Well, there's a nice little lineup, huh? A little bit big. All right, let's go. I, I think that orange one. Red, orange. I wonder if that's going to be close enough to work that. And is it going to pull in the right direction? It will. It's going to fit in there. Go pop you in a stand. We'll give that a yank and see if that, that bites on there. Actually, when we look at... Where's the... Drive part of it. Kind of hard to tell because the washer's in the middle, right? But that's the gut part of it. Kind of looks like the same thing, don't it? Where the two pieces grab. Totally a different diameter as far as the you know, the body size is concerned. I don't know. I'm gonna pop the plug out of it just so we're not fighting resistance. Trying to educate herself right now. All right, let's go see if that will work for us. Yep. Good. We're gonna leave this one alone. So this is gonna be our just in case. Let's go yank a spring at a one of these and see if it's close to anything that we can work with. Uh, which, whatever one's the crappiest, we should probably chop up. Mm. Trying to find one that's broke. None of them are. <laughs> Let's go home light. Let's see if we can get that. To get a socket on that. It's gonna strip out. Actually, we should probably even see if it's any good first, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's got a broken. That one's already broken. I figured this one's probably got the closest size-wise. You know, the, the little space that's that's in there compared to the other ones. I'm also worried about the height of the spring. Is she gonna go boing on us? I think so. That's okay. tension off of it. Now we should be able to lift that out of there. Oh, losing it. They lost it. <laughs> it's alright. So that one looks like it's possibly broke too. I've seen the weird Fold over up there, and I see a break over here. I think this one's a dud. Let's go Springer. Might be enough material to work with though, if you want to try heating it up and bending our own tab on it. <laughs> no, that's an extra. It's just the way it's mounted together. That's kind of weird. That's a weird uh, 
Yeah. I've seen that before. It looked like it was broke. It was just the way that was set up. Let me um, spring this on the floor. I don't know. Width seems about right. Let's um. So it's got the original one had that kind of a hook on the end of it to latch on to. I'm going to say that it went in. So we'd have to modify that part of it. And the other end, I don't know, we, do we even have the other end of it left? My guess is it was roughly kind of the same thing. Let's get this out of the way. Yeah, there it is. Yes, I had a hook on each end. Uh, let's go and try to wind that up. <laughs> Actually, let's go see what this one has. See if it's got the hooks on it. If can get it apart. Yeah, that one's gonna fight us. Uh, we get a big ass screwdriver. How's that fit you? There we go. So that one works, a little tab pops out. Okay, let's get um oh, it's got a knot in it, that's why. Get rid of that, let it unwind itself. You know it's gonna go boing. Let's see what that one looks like. Cause it's got the correct, the correct tabs on it. It's looking a little on the fat side though. That's where it's gonna be an issue, I think. It's how much height it has. Yeah. We tried. I expected that. Back to what we were. Well, I'm thinking this one may be the closest to what we're looking for. The rope is about ready to fail anyway, so let's go give her a cut. Let her free. So you can get that little snap ring out of there. A little C clip, rather. <laughs> Parts everywhere. Let's go see. that spring looks like. Same height? Yes it is. That's a little different. Will that work for us on there? I think so. Well, it's a good way to get that out of there without it springing and crazy expanding on us. Can we get a um, couple of tie wraps around it? I think that's a futile effort. Let's um, I'm gonna try grabbing a little pair of vice grips. It's <laughs> probably two, but I many smaller ones around here. Is she gonna go spring? Whoa, just that outer edge. That was a little sus. No, it's riveted. Okay, so we have to shrink that one up to get that small. Ooh, that might be a little on the difficult side. I wonder if we got to take some out of it. I wonder if this one just had that much less material in it. Let me go look at the, where was the rest of it? Don't know. This might end up in a nightmare. <laughs> All right, so we need to be able to pull the outer and let it shrink down when that's going to happen. I don't know. Where does that outer shell stop? I 
So that outside one is a fixed diameter. It goes around back to itself. So this is never going to be able to get smaller. Well, that sucks. <laughs> right? It has to be an end to it somehow. It's got to be under. Yes, yeah, so that's never gonna. So we're gonna have to cut it and make an outside hook. You think that's the deal? All right, because if it's got a rivet in it, it's never gonna be able to get smaller than that outside circle. All right, we're hacking. slide that one out hopefully then we got to put a hook on it yet yeah. my tie wraps a little too tight actually we got to do one more cut because that this part's still riveted together let's go Gotta make it a little smaller anyway. Let's go see if we can get some slack in it. Now that should be able to come out of there. All right, so we got to bend a hook on this. Let's go pop this in the vise. We'll see if we can bend this tip back on itself because that's the one that's going to have to latch inside there. That's good. What about the profile of it? Let we'll that cool. Let's um, shoot some Earl on it. Bring the temperature down. I don't know if that little tab's going to break off because it loses its temper when you heat it. Let's just go see if that's going to have some strength to it. We'll go with that. Want to see from the side? Yeah, that's what we're looking at. I try to uh, shrink it down if I can get it. I'll stick it in the vise. Smaller diameter, you know. I think we need something about that size. We get that wrapped back up. And I get another tie wrap or three on it. There's plenty of fire. <laughs> Yeah. All right, it's gonna stay. Let me get some tie wraps on that to hold it. And I just gotta go measure. See if we got it small enough to fit on there. We're close. Yeah. See if we're tiny enough to get it in there. We gotta cut the tie wraps off and get them out. Uh oh, ow, ow, ouch, ouch. Stabbing me. Gotta go a hair more. Oh boy. <laughs> Get that one out. You know, there's probably like some simple way to do this, but I don't know it. Don't 
kill me. Slice into my finger if it lets go. Ah, oh, you suck. You know, it's gonna get buried under there now. Actually, I probably shouldn't use um, cutters. I'll end up cutting the head right off of the thing. Come out. Come out. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we can let it relax. Now, what do you think the chances are we're gonna be able to catch that on there? I guess if, um, oh, I don't want to lift up on it though. All right, I'm going to go wrestle with that. <laughs> uh, you watching? But I, I think we might be able to get it. Might have got it. Oh yeah, I got it. I ended up, um, stick my finger underneath there, lifting up on the center coil, starting it on this one. And then trying to do one of those real quick. <laughs> All right, let's go assemble the center of it and get a rope on it. Looks like the original rope is still hanging on the handlebars. After it broke off, let's um, see if we can use that back over again. To make that like a point. Let's put that right in there. We'll pull that up. Generally, you kind of go the other way. You put the rope in this way. You put the handle on last. But I may be able to get that. Pick again. You need a pick with a less of an angle than that. Yeah. Had to come over at it from the other side. There we go. Oh, definitely a tight fit. I'm gonna retie a knot on this side. Put the handle on the other side. together lock up the crash bull strike that's got a fit in there get in that hole if I hit you with a hammer I warned you You know, it probably would have been a good idea if I ran it through there first. <laughs> I should be able to get that one though. Oh, I get it. Hey, right, let's rip, let her rip. I think it sucks that cord in, no problem. My fingers are right. Yay! Let's go throw that back on the machine. So you go through all that. And put it together. <laughs> it's going the wrong way. <laughs> I suck. All right, the rope's got to go the other way, so the spring's got to get flipped over and go the other way too. The spring's actually in the wrong direction, so I got to do all that crap all over again. <sighs> Missed it by that much. <laughs> 50 50 shot. That has to get flipped over and go the other way. Don't mind the heat, but. Ha! Kick my ass, will you? Let's go take a peek. See what our carb is doing. Ooh, a bunch of sludge on that. that has to get washed off, huh? That means you gotta clean the bot bottom of my tank. Got a bunch of crap in it. That's all that means. That should all wash off though. Let's get them cleaned up. Let's get everything cleaned up pretty good. I blew them out with air, took a blade and scraped off all the excess gasket material that was on them. Uh, for the sake of time, unfortunately, I'm not gonna film the reassembly of it. <laughs> Some of you saying, thank God. But essentially it's just a, uh, you know, replacing those old gaskets 
and seals and pumps and diaphragms with those new ones. It looks like this is set up to uh, withstand ethanol too. I think that's the uh, style when it's in that material instead of that material. So for the redo, let me go poof and get that done. This one was snazzy. It even came with full uh, assembly, troubleshooting. Yeah, nice carp kit. Essentially just looked at the picture and put it back together. <laughs> All right, let's go put that on there and try to get some fuel hooked up to it and see if it does anything. I think before I do that though, that is in there, that's called reed valves, little one-way doors. And you see all the white corrosion that's around there. I'm going to go take a second and try to clean some of that out of there. There's a, uh, this block will come out and those reed valves will come out of there. All right, I couldn't help myself. Ew. That's nasty. Let's go give ourselves a little poke. Let's see how those guys are doing. That's stuck. I definitely clean it up. It's been sitting in water, it looks like. And we're gonna take a peek behind there, make sure we got nothing going on. Yeah, definitely looks like we want to clean some of that up. Let's get some. I want that going through there. Everything else behind it looks doesn't look terrible. The rod is painted white. Hmm. I see a little bit of rust on the side of that bearing right there. All right, I'm gonna go clean all that up. And we'll get her back together. Hit on a wire wheel, and knock some of that outside rust off, but underneath it still has some. That all needs to get cleaned up. Trap door needs to shut. <laughs> yeah, it definitely needs needs some love. We'll pull both sides apart, right? Read that uh, revalve is uh best description. The, a, a two stroke will run. It uses the bottom of the crankcase to draw stuff in, and then pushes it to the top of the cylinder as the piston goes up and down. A revalve is, and then the, the ports on the side of the piston on the cylinder wall become the open and closed valve, so to speak. This is uh, taking it one step further. It kind of fine tunes the charge, it gives you a little bit more, actually quite a bit more performance on it. All right, I'm gonna clean all of them up to get that back together. You really kind of want them to be able to shut should be sitting fairly straight. They are. Look, they look decent. You just want to make sure that when these are resting against there, there's no air gap going around them. You can kind of put a light behind them and take a peek when you're putting it together. That decompression valve is frozen in the back. We'll deal with that later. I don't want to try killing the pull start, so let's try it with the drill. Let's see, if we got choke. We got choke. Let's see, what we get wrong way. Nope. I'm new. There you go. Yeah, drill's not gonna do it. Go get a good old plug-in one. Let's right, try her with an electric drill. I get the full start off because the uh, decompression isn't freed up yet. I don't want to break that full start. I turn that choke off now. All right, we gotta adjust the air fuel mix. Let me give her a little bit of throttle. We're too we're too rich. But we'll get her dialed in. I mean, yeah, I'll put you back in the stand again. She wants to run, she wants to go, she wants to play. Tweaker. 
Yeah, I'm out too far. I'm gonna dial them in. We'll see if we get it run smooth. They're way out. Probably came off the, the camera, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, guys, I think that might be a good place to leave off. I don't want to do any more damage. Plus, it's uh, we are smoked up pretty good in here, and I don't want to be breathing this crap in. Well, we got a couple of things to go deal with still. We got parts that we're waiting on, but we just got the engine to run. We know it'll run. That's a good sign. That thing's a piece of crap. I gotta get rid of that. And it looks like the cork gasket right here is leaking a little bit on that seal. But she'll dial in. She'll do what she's supposed to do. We're uh, fairly close to uh, having a good operating engine. A wisp of smoke coming off of her. Neat. Yeah, so those other parts should be coming in. Uh, I don't know. One thing I'm concerned about is how this plastic broke apart on this how brittle it is. I wonder if this stuff is made out of the same thing and I, we're gonna go you know, put a little bit of uh, stress on this, whether this is gonna hold up or not, but I guess we're gonna go find out. <laughs> but she lives! I'm happy for that. All right. All right guys, with that, I think at this point we're gonna go sign off. We'll do some more fine tuning later and uh, getting her kind of more dialed in, but at least you know we got a good engine and we got parts coming 
and uh, my screw up with uh, pulling the clutch off and killing the bearing only cost me 16 bucks. So I'm happy about that. All right, guys, with that, we're signing off. <laughs> and hopefully we have some snow when uh, this is uh, up and running, but we'll see. Till then, I'll see you. Bye.